क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन टुडेज सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द गिब्स फेज रोल गिब्स फेज रोल इज द फेज रोल विच टॉक्स अबाउट थ्री मेन थिंग्स द फर्स्ट थिंग इज द डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफ द सिस्टम द सेकेंड थिंग इज द नंबर ऑफ कंपोनेंट्स प्रेजेंट इन द सिस्टम एंड द थर्ड थिंग इज द नंबर ऑफ फेजेज अ सिस्टम कैन अटेन एंड हाउ दीज थ्री थिंग्स आर रिलेटेड इज गिवेन इन द फेज रोल लेट एस सी इन डिटेल वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज फेज रोल एंड हाउ इट इज डिराइव इन टूडेज सेशन gibbs phase rule and the phase rule equation we have or the statement of the phase rule gibbs phase rule may be stated as provided equilibrium now what do we mean by equilibrium when we talk about any system any chemical system we have an equilibrium for it let's take a reaction over here and reaction let's say na plus cl forming nacl now at equilibrium we'll have certain amount of na and cl present at the reactant side and nacl present at the product side at this point the amount of na and cl present at the reactant side should be equal to the amount of product that is nacl on the product side and both these amounts should remain constant for a very long period of time that is known as equilibrium equilibrium is a point wherein the reaction has happened every dynamic change has happened the breaking of bonds the breaking of bonds has already happened and after that what remains and stays forever that point will be my equilibrium point so over here the system talks about an equilibrium point so at any system whenever have a equilibrium between the number of phases now what do we mean by phases phases are the different phases we have the solid phase liquid phase semi solid phase also we have the different kinds of phases with points for example if i have a liquid phase going into a solid phase it will have a freezing point so from this end of the freezing point it will be a liquid phase from this end of the freezing point it will be a solid phase and this is one point so there are different phases of the components present in a system so it will have different phases is not influenced by gravitational electric or magnetic forces now all these are nothing but my physical elements over here the physical elements are gravitational force electric force or magnetic force or by surface action but only by temperature pressure and concentration these three are the variables that we can use that means any system at equilibrium should not be affected at all by gravitational force electrical force or magnetic force the only thing it should be affected by is my temperature pressure and concentration now what do i mean when i say it should not be affected or it should be affected that means that if i change the temperature of that system there will be changes in the system if i change the concentration of the components present in the system the entire equilibrium of the system can get changed if i change the pressure of the system again the equilibrium will change but if i change the gravity of it or some kind of electrical force around it or i put a magnetic force around it surrounded by magnets nothing should change in the system that means the only three variables which we are allowed to vary which affect the system and the equilibrium state of the system a temperature concentration and pressure and no other physical aspect of it then the number of degrees of freedom always remember degrees of freedom is represented by f of the system is related to the number of components now what do we mean by components components are the reactants which combine together to form products these can be either in the elemental form or in a compound form they can be atomic or molecular that doesn't matter the reactants which combine to form products are my components and the phases again the phases are the different kinds of phases in which the components and the products will be now this phase can be either solid liquid or gaseous phase and the rule is given as f is equals to c plus p minus 2 where f stands for degree of freedom c stands for components p stands for phases minus 2 that means my degree of freedom is equals to the number of components plus the number of phases minus 2 let us see the explanation of this phase rule in detail explanation of phase rule let us consider a heterogeneous system now what do we mean by heterogeneous system we have two kinds of systems 
homogeneous system, heterogeneous system. Let us take an example of a homogeneous system first. If I take water and add some salt to it and I stir it, what happens is the salt after some point of time will dissolve completely into the water. After the entire dissolution of salt has happened, we call that system as a homogeneous system because when we look at water, it is just one liquid phase of it. We do not see any crystals of salt in water. If at all we could have seen those crystals, it would be a heterogeneous system. Why? Because we would have salt in solid phase and water in liquid phase. But since the salt completely dissolves in water, we just see one phase and that's the reason why we call it a homogeneous mixture. Let us take another example. If I take rock, I take water and I put rock in it and I try to stir it. Now this rock, after stirring and after keeping it for a very long period of time, will remain a rock only. That means when I look at the water, I will see two things over here, the liquid state and the solid state. The liquid state will be the state of water and the solid state will be the state of rock. And that's the reason why we can call it a heterogeneous system. Heterogeneous system has more than one phase. Homogeneous system have only one phase. That doesn't mean the number of components are same. In the example I gave you of a homogeneous system, we had two components. We had salt that is NaCl and we had water that is H2O. It was two component but one phase. In the other example I gave you, we had rock and water. The rock which was solid and water which was liquid. So over here again both these phases come together. But again it forms two phase and the components are also two. That means the components can be any number and the phases can also be of any number. Another example in which I can give you is oil and water. If I mix oil and water and I stir it well, even after some point of time, we will have a separate layers. That means a separation over there. The below one will be water and the upper one will be oil. Since I can see two phases, it is a heterogeneous system. So over here they are considering a heterogeneous system. That means it will have more than one phase for sure. In equilibrium consisting of C components, it can be any number of components and it is distributed in P phases. It can be any number of phases as well. As has been already defined the number of degrees of freedom. What is degrees of freedom? Again F. That means F of a system in equilibrium is that the number of variable factors. Now what do we mean by degree of freedom? Degree of freedom is the number of variables that can change. The gravitational aspect should not affect the system at equilibrium. Even the electric or the magnetic forces should not affect the systems at equilibrium. The only three factors which can actually affect the system at equilibrium are three. The temperature that is change in temperature will affect the system the pressure and the concentration and that's the reason why we correlate degrees of freedom to these three things. Degrees of freedom that is F for a system can be defined in terms of only three things that is temperature, pressure and concentration. If I decide to put any one of them as constant, for example, I'm taking temperature as constant. That means I make sure that my entire reaction will take place. For example, let's say 30 degrees Celsius. That means in my entire reaction, I am not going to change the temperature at all. The temperature is going to be constant. Then the degree of freedom can only be associated with the other two aspects. That is the concentration of it and the pressure of it. Because I can change the concentration and the pressure and that will change the degree of freedom. But we should understand that there is not more than three aspects of it in which can change the degree of freedom. That means temperature, concentration and pressure are the only three variables which are allowed, none other than that. Such as temperature, pressure and composition that is arbitrarily fixed to define the system completely. Obviously, the number of such variables is given by the total number of variables of the system minus the number of variables which are defined automatically by the virtue of variable is 2 only. If I take one of it as constant, the other two will define the system. If I take pressure as constant, temperature and composition or temperature and concentration will define the system. Concentration can also be called as composition. Now we shall understand one more thing. Temperature can either increase or decrease. That is just one thing. The pressure can also either increase or decrease. But what about the composition? That means the concentration. The concentration can increase and decrease depending upon the number of substances which are present in it. For example, if I have two substances present in it, that is water plus salt. 
plus I add some kind of sugar to it. So there are two solutes to one solvent. I can either increase or decrease the composition of any of the two solutes. That means the concentrations are dependent on the number of solutes also present over there. And that's the reason why for any kind of solution or the system, the number of concentration or composition variables can be more. It can be more than one depending on the number of elements which are there. In order to define the composition of each phase, it is necessary to specify them only as C minus 1. And that's the reason why we write it as C minus 1 because there can be more than one substance and they can be changed more than one times. Composition variable because the composition of the remaining component can be obtained by that difference. Since there are P phases, again now I have different kinds of reactions and different kinds of reactants present in the reactions will be in different phases. For example, if I take water plus salt, the water is in liquid phase but the salt is in solid phase and I mix it, it becomes a homogeneous liquid phase. That means at the start I had two phases, after the reaction is done I have just one phase. If I take rock plus water and I mix it, I have only two phases, the solid rock and the liquid water. That means the number of phases can also vary depending on the number of reactants which are present. All the examples I'm giving you right now just have two components, either salt and water or rock and water or oil and water. But all of them are just two components. We have to decide and we have to see further that there can be more than two components as well. And depending on the number of components, there can be different phases for different kinds of components. Which we see as since there are P phases, the total number of composition or concentration may vary. We write it as P C minus 1. So since there are P phases, the total number of composition or concentration of variable will be P C minus 1. On adding the temperature and pressure variables, the total number of variables of the system can be P C minus 1 plus 2. On the basis of thermodynamic consideration, when a heterogeneous system, again heterogeneous system is a system which has large number of phases, that is more than one phase available, is in equilibrium at a constant temperature and pressure. Over here I have taken constant temperature and constant pressure. That means out of the three variables we had, that is temperature, pressure and concentration, two of them have become constant. That is my pressure and temperature have become constant. The only thing I can vary right now is nothing but the concentration of it. The chemical potential, now the chemical potential is measured as mu. It is given or denoted as mu. We have to remember the chemical potential stands for mu over here. Of a given component must be same in every phase. Thus, if there is one component in three phases, now I have taken three phases over here, phase alpha, phase beta, phase gamma. There can be any kind of phases. They can be either three of them in a solid state, liquid state, semi-solid state, gaseous state, any of the state. Over here we have taken alpha, beta and gamma. And one of these, let's say alpha over here, is referred to as standard phase. Then this fact can be expressed. Now what do we mean by standard phase? It is one phase which is standard. That means that is one phase which is connected to two other phases. Let's for example take solid, liquid and gas. I have solid, I have liquid and I have gas. This liquid phase can be considered as a standard phase because from this liquid state I can turn into a solid state. I can also turn into a gaseous state. And that's the reason why we'll take this as for example alpha state which is the liquid state over here. Then this fact must be expressed in the form of the following equation. I have mu alpha is equals to mu beta, mu alpha is equals to mu gamma. Now what does this mu stand for? This mu is nothing but my chemical potential. That means chemical potential of my alpha phase is equals to chemical potential of my beta phase and chemical potential of my alpha phase is also equal to the chemical potential of my gamma phase. Why? Because alpha phase is the phase which is actually connecting the beta phase as well as the gamma phase. Thus for each component, I'll have two equations which are possible. Hence for each component of P, I will write as P minus 1 equation. If there are C components, the number of equations or variables possible will be C into P minus 1. So we have already derived this previously that is C into P minus 1. Since chemical potential of the function is temperature, pressure and concentration, we have only three variables, temperature, pressure and concentration, each equation must be represented by only one variable. Now let us see the degrees of freedom over here. We have two equations already derived. The first equation we derived was C into P minus 1. And the second equation we derived was P C minus 1 plus 2. Now we will just combine both of these equations and we will get the final phase rule that we have. So let's start 
simplifying this entire term we have p into c minus 1 this c minus 1 is in bracket that means we can just open up the bracket while opening up the bracket we can simply multiply so we have pc minus p when i open the bracket it will be pc minus p and this plus 2 will be as it is then we have minus of c into p minus 1 now since it is c into p minus 1 we can open up this bracket as well this will become cp minus c now this cp minus c has a minus sign and that's the reason why we can actually change the sign so it will become minus cp plus c over here because this minus and minus will become a plus over here now this pc can be cancelled out with this cp because this is plus pc and this is minus cp the cp can be also written as pc it's one and the same thing so this plus pc and minus cp cancel out the only thing which is remaining is plus c minus p and plus 2 which finally forms the equation f is equals to c minus p plus 2 and this is the gibbs phase rule or the phase rule which we'll be using for almost all the equations so over here we studied the gibbs phase rule it is made up of f which is degrees of freedom c that stands for components p that is phases we also studied the anti gibbs phase rule stating f is equals to c minus p plus 2 and how the degrees of freedom are affected by the components and the phases we also saw the degrees of freedom are affected only by three substances which are temperature, pressure and concentration and we do not have any gravitational or magnetic or electric field affecting the state of equilibrium at all. We also saw that the degrees of freedom are affected by temperature, pressure and concentration and nothing about gravity, magnetic fields or electric fields can affect the state of equilibrium at all. We also studied how the phase rule has been derived and the formula of it. And finally, we got the phase rule equation of it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.